Let us see how to analyze a frame structure by using direct stiffness method. So these are the 14 steps that you should go through in order to analyze a frame structure by using direct stiffness method. And a lot of the steps are very similar or same as that of the stiffness method. So let us see. The first step is to calculate kinematic indeterminacy. And then we will assign system coordinates. And a third step, we will assign element coordinates for each element of the frame structure. After that, we have to develop displacement transformation matrix for each element. In stiffness method, we develop displacement transformation matrix for entire structure. But in direct stiffness method, we have to develop displacement transformation matrix for each element. And from that, we have we can develop element stiffness method. Uh, K star is equal to E i by L 4, 2, 2, 4 is the equation for E i by L into 4, 2, 2, 4. This is the format of element stiffness method. And just uh, develop element stiffness method for each element. And also, we have to find out the element stiffness matrix for entire structure that is just by combining the element stiffness matrices for each element. After that we will develop structural stiffness matrix from each elemental stiffness matrices. So for each element we have to develop structural stiffness matrix k is equal to a transpose k star a where k star is the element stiffness matrix for each element. Okay. After that we will come we will transform this structural stiffness matrices into the global coordinate and then we will develop global stiffness matrix then we have to find out the fm fixed in moment and equivalent join load matrices after that we will develop force matrix force matrix is nothing but the force corresponding to the system coordinates uh, that can be obtained from the equivalent join load matrix and after that, we can calculate, we can develop displacement matrix by using the equation delta is equal to kg inverse into p, where kg is the global stiffness matrix and p is the force matrix. And the 11th step is to find out the element displacement. That can be calculated by using the equation small q is equal to small a into delta where a is the displacement transformation matrix for entire structure okay displacement transformation matrix for entire structure not for each element so we have to combine them into a single matrix and find out the element stiffness matrix for sorry displacement transformation matrix for entire structure and that into displacement matrix will give you the element displacement then element force can be calculated by using Q is equal to K star into Q where K star is the element stiffness matrix for entire structure and Q is the element displacement matrix. The finally, we have to compute the final force or final momentum by using equation by just adding up the element force and FEM, fixed end moment. Now, what we obtain is final moment or moment that each joints will be obtained. From that, we can easily draw a bending moment diagram. Okay, so these are the 14 steps. Now, let us go, go through an example and let us see how can we do this. Okay, so the question is find the end moments of the frame shown in figure by using direct stiffness method. So, this is a frame. Let me name it as A, B, C and D. AB is of length 3 meter, CD is also 3 meter, but BC is of 6 meters of length with 2 pointed load acting on it. Okay. So, first step that is to calculate kinematic indeterminacy, and we know the equation for kinematic indeterminacy calculation or degree of freedom of a frame structure by using equation 3j minus m plus c, where j is the number of joints, m number of members, c constraints. Okay. So, number of joints are 1, 2, 3 and 4 and number of members 1, 2, 3 and number of constraints here at fixed end 3 constraints will be there and another fixed end have 3 constraints. So, total 6 constraints. So, the equation 
gives the value 3 that is degree of freedom is 3 for the structure but look at the structure you can see it is a non sway structure or it is a structure with the symmetry okay so when we uh, see when we cut this section at the midpoint cut this structure at the midpoint you can see it is a symmetrical section so the degree of freedom which is 3 is here these are the three degrees of freedom that is horizontal displacement moment rotation and rotation at the c and b okay but since the structure is a non sway structure since the structure is a symmetrical structure we can neglect this degree of freedom because there won't be any any displacement happening in the horizontal direction so we are neglecting this degree of freedom so our degree of freedom or kinematic indeterminacy will become 3 minus 1 which is 2 now second step is to assign system coordinate it's very easy we will assign system coordinate at the places of degrees of freedom so one at b and another at c a rotation will be provided okay and assign element coordinates element coordinates are given uh, for each element there will be two coordinates one star two star three star four star five star and six star and fourth step is to form displacement transformation matrix for each element so for first element let me take a b as first element b c second element c d third element for a b we can see only uh, for a b there are two elemental coordinates one star and two star and displace uh, this degree of freedom which affect a b is only degree of freedom at a b or we can say first system coordinate will only have effect on a b so for first system coordinate when we apply a unit rotation at b one star will give you the value zero because there is no rotation happening in the fixed end two star will have one displacement because unit rotation is given at the two star or at the point b so the displacement transformation matrix for this element a b is zero and one similarly for b c we can see the bc will affect it with both system coordinates when we apply unit displacement at one three star and four star are the elemental uh, element coordinates of b and c so at three star when we apply unit displacement at one the displacement will be one and four star will be zero when you apply unit displacement at the second system coordinate 3 star will have the value 0 since no rotation will happen at 3 star sorry yeah 3 star or at b and one unit displacement will occur at 4 star or we can say at a c so this is 4 star this is 3 star okay so this is how we develop displacement transformation matrix which is very similar to the stiffness method and for cd only 3 will uh, sorry the second system coordinate will affect so at uh, 5 star and 6 star the values are 1 and 0 when you apply unit displacement at second system coordinate the 5 star is here 5 star and 6 star so when you apply unit displacement at 2 5 star will give you the value 1 and 6 star will be 0 so these are the displacement transmission matrix for each element now form display element stiffness matrix we have the equation e i by l 4 2 2 4 and uh, the equation just apply the equation length is the only unknown uh, we have the length given in the figure that was for a b it was 3 meter b c it was 6 meter and c d it was 3 meter okay so e i by l for b c is 1 4 by 6, 2 by 6, 2 by 6 and 4 by 6 and k star for c is 4 by 3, 2 by 3, 2 by 3 and 4 by 3. Now we will combine all these elemental stiffness, elemental stiffness matrices together to form the element stiffness matrix of the structure k star. So we just keep all these matrices diagonally and develop the bigger matrix or elemental stiffness matrix of the structure. Now step number six, we have to develop structural stiffness matrix. So for each element, structural stiffness matrix have to be developed. So K A B will be A transpose A B. This one is A B 
transpose of AB displacement transformation matrix of AB. Transpose of the displacement transformation matrix of AB. This one is K star AB and this is A AB. Okay. So when you multiply this, you will get the answer as 1.33 EI. Similarly, for BC, this one is A BC transpose K star BC. ABC. We have all these matrices before. So we just combine them and multiply them. You will get the structural stiffness matrix for each element. And for CD is also 1.33 EI. Now we are going to combine all the all of this into global stiffness matrix. For before that, we have to convert these matrices into global coordinates. So we have uh, two system coordinates or so two global coordinates, two one and two so when when we look at the structure we have a b c and d and the coordinates are one and two these are the global coordinates and a b will get affected only with one so we have the value which is corresponding to first system coordinate now we are introducing the second system coordinate just by introducing a second column and second row with values 0. Now, this is the stiffness matrix of AB in global coordinate. Similarly, for BC, BC we have uh, first global coordinate and second global coordinates are affecting. So, we can keep it as it is. And CD, CD is get affected with only 2, right? So, we have to convert it into 1 and 2 by introducing 1. We will introduce a one uh, column and row at the position of one with values zero. Now all these can be combined together or added together to form global stiffness matrix. So we just add these three matrices to develop global stiffness matrix. Now step number eight is to develop FEM and equivalent join load matrix. So fixed end moment can be calculated we have to convert the all the loads which are acting other than the joints to join the loads or nodal loads for that we have to calculate fixed end moment now look at a b is there any loads acting no right so since no loads are acting along a b we can say fixed end moment of a b is zero and for b a is also zero and b c we have b c but in b c two loads are acting 20 kilonewton at 2 meter and 20 kilonewton at 4 meter from B. So we have to find out the fixed end moment at BC. We know if we are provided with a beam element with W at a distance A and B, the fixed end moment developed at left hand side will be minus W A into B square by L square. And here it will be plus w a square b by l square so by just using this equation we can calculate the fixed end moment at bc we have two loads so let me name it as w1 and w2 and distance from b is a1 and this distance is b1 and from b distance to w2 is kept as a2 and the remaining distance is kept as B2. Now applying the values of W1 and W2, A1 and A2, you will get the values of FEM BC as minus 26.67 and FEM CB as 26.67. And since there is no load acting at CD, we can say FEM CD and DC are zero. Now let us combine all this and develop the fixed and moment matrix and equivalent join load matrix. Equivalent joint load matrix is just the opposite sign of fixed end moment matrix. From that, we will take the force matrix. Force matrix is the matrix corresponding to the value of system coordinates. We have two system coordinates, one at uh, one at this end, another at this end. So for the value fixed end moment or equivalent joint load value. Corresponding to first system coordinate is 26.67 and second system coordinate is minus 26.67. So the force matrix is developed. 
Step number 8 is to find the displacement matrix. We have kg. So find out the kg inverse and multiply it with the force matrix. Then we will obtain displacement matrix for this structure. Now moving to the step number 11 that is to find out element displacement. Element displacement can be calculated by using displacement transformation matrix of the entire structure into displacement matrix. For that we have to find out the displacement transformation matrix for entire structure and we have uh, two system coordinates 1 and 2. When you apply a unit displacement at 1, the values corresponding to 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, 5 star and 6 star are noted. And when you apply unit displacement at 1, system coordinate 1, 1 star is 0, 2 star and 3 star have 1 value and 4 star, 5 star, 6 star will have 0 value. And when you apply unit displacement at 2, the value of 1 star, 2 star, 3 star are 0, but 4 star and 5 star will have the value 1 and 6 star will have again 0. So this is the displacement, displacement transformation matrix for the entire structure and that when multiplied with the displacement matrix will get the element displacement. So we have obtained element displacement. Now step number 12 is to find out the element forces. Element force can be calculated by using um, multiplying the element stiffness matrix of the entire structure into element displacement. So we have uh, find out this element stiffness matrix for entire structure and multiplying it with the element displacement will give the element forces. So forces in each elements are calculated. Now final force. Final force is just the addition of this uh, step number 12 and FEM. You will get the final force or final moments. Now final moments are calculated. Just adding Q and FEM will give the final moments. So now the final moments are obtained or final forces are obtained. Now we will draw bendy moment diagram. So bendy moment diagram can be drawn by using the values of final moments obtained. Here we have 10.653 which is positive. So we will give a clockwise moment. 21.307 at 2 star. So we have a at 2 star 21.307 again clockwise since it is positive value. And at the 3 star, you can see the value is minus 21.343. Since it is negative, we will apply an anti-clockwise moment. And at 4 star, it is 21.343 clockwise. So, we will obtain a value 21.343. And at 5 star, it is minus 21.96. It is negative. So anti-clockwise and at 6 star it is minus 10.653 again anti-clockwise. Okay. So this is the bending moment diagram for this structure. Okay. So this is how you calculate how you draw the bending moment diagram for the given frame structure.